Welcome to our second video in our Maker series. In this video, we're going to show you how to apply two horizontal meters to the right hand area of our new interface that we created called My Interface. Now, to get to My Interface, come up here to the Macros pull down menu, click on Select Interface, and now come down here and click on Documents where it was, and we have it under Maker Plot. And now I'll click under the Macros folder, and there's My Interface. So double click on My Interface, and you're presented with a question that says, Start a new plot using this macro. Say yes. And our new My Interface just loaded. The first thing we want to do is come up here to the Object Editor and click on the Object Editor icon, which is a hammer. So click on it. Come over here to the Controls 2 tab, and we see in the Controls 2 tab a series of uh, meter icons, and we're going to choose the horizontal meter. Now, just simply left click on it and move your mouse cursor over here to the area where we want our meter to be and release the left mouse button. Okay, there is our meter. Now that meter is a horizontal meter. It's really not positioned exactly where we want it to be. So what we can do for that condition is to push the shift key and right click it and simply use our arrow keys to move the meter back and forth or up and down. We can also push the shift key and use the arrow keys to move it in a more discreet manner, if you will. If we look up at our menu, we notice a couple of things. Number one, we notice the name of our meter is GAU underscore 53. This is a name that our object editor gave to this particular meter because we have other controls on our interface, which are mainly in our menu area. To position our meter more carefully, what we can also do is come up here to the left and top, and let's change that from an 81.3 to an 81 exactly. Okay, and now hit the Enter key, and now our meter has moved to 81. Let's come down here to the top, and let's move it to 77 exactly. We can also affect the width and height of the meter by doing the same thing with the width and height text boxes. Or we can simply click on the text box and then use our arrow keys to move the meter. There I'm changing the width. Now I'll change the height. All right, it looks like we have a meter now with a width of 18 and a height of 13. So let's leave it at that particular setting. Now we want to create two meters. So we can do the same steps as we just did, or we can use a shortcut. And that's called the duplicate key. So come down here and click the duplicate. And now we've created another meter. To position that particular meter, again, push our shift key down and right click. And now we can use our arrow keys to move the meter down. All right, that's about right. And once again, we can look at our left and top. Our left is at 81, which is where our other meter was at 81. And our top obviously has to be a different value, so that's 52. And since we use the duplicate keys, our width is the same at 18, and our height is the same at 13. So we'll leave it at that. And looking back up here at the name, our MakerPlot object editor has named it GAU underscore 53 underscore 54. So that's MakerPlot's way of naming meters automatically when you use the duplicate key. Now let's go through the properties, functions, and values and adjust those to affect our meters. Now once again, we're working on the second meter or the bottom meter, so we'll work on that first. Our minimum is at zero, which is the zero setting on our meter. And the maximum right now is 50. 
So we'll leave our minimum at zero. We'll come down here to maximum. And again, it's at 50. Let's change that to what our Y value is right now. And we'll change that to 250. So we see now that our second meter at the bottom goes from zero to 250. Now we have our alarm min and alarm max values. Click on alarm min and we see that the alarm min is a minus 9999. Our alarm max is a plus 9999, which basically takes it completely off the scale for either the minimum or maximum. Let's change that. Let's come back to uh, alarm minimum and change that to something more reasonable like 50. We'll key in 50, hit the enter key. And now we see a small little red line under the 50 label of our second meter. So that's our alarm minimum. For our alarm maximum, let's make that some other value. Let's say 150. Hit the enter key. And now we have a larger red line right under 150. So now we have the minimum and maximum alarm settings set on our meter. Coming down to channel, this says channel 0. Let's change that to channel 1. We're going to leave the top meter at channel 0. Well, let's change this to channel 1. So now this is going to monitor channel 1 of the analog signals. And to do that, automatically, we want to check the auto box. So we'll check auto, and that means it will follow the channel 1 analog plot automatically. For the alarm, we want to click on the alarm checkbox. That means our alarm will go off whenever our minimums or maximums are exceeded. And since we have a zero value right now at our meter, our minimum value is exceeded. So that's why the alarm went off. Here's our sound. Right now, as you heard, we have a beep for our sound for our alarm. We'll leave it at that. Matter of fact, we're going to change the top meter to another sound, but we'll leave this one at a beep. Color. We can change the color from blue-gray, which is which it is right now, to something else like a gray, a blue. And notice every time we do this, the alarm goes off. Kind of annoying, but this we only do this once, so it, it's uh, livable. Here's a green and an orange, and a white. So let's leave the bottom meter at a white to distinguish it from the top meter, which is blue-gray. Coming down here, we have label. And right now, the meter is labeled meter. What we want to do is change that to something more appropriate. Since we're monitoring channel 1, let's change meter to channel 1. Type in channel 1, hit the enter key, and now we have channel 1 being displayed on our meter. And notice that it's red because our setting is below our 50 minimum reading, and once it's between 50 and 150, the channel 1 color will change from a red to a green. Looking more at the choices for our menus, we have major and minor ticks. The major ticks are the graticules of our meter, and right now they're set to six. So we have six major ticks or graticules indicated as a 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250. Those are our major ticks. The minor ticks are the little ticks in between the major ones, and right now they're set to four. So we'll leave them set at four. Our value is zero, and we can actually input a value into this manually if we so choose. But since we're automatically set to plot uh, channel one, we'll just leave leave the value where it's at. Decimals. We are at one digit after the decimal or to the right of the decimal. We can change that from a zero to a one or two. Let's change it to two. So now our meter for channel 1 is going to read our analog value to two decimal places. Menu. This means we can enable or disable the pop-up menu. 
And once again, you've seen that in another video. Coming over here to the meter, we can right click on the meter and we see the menu pop up where in effect we can change everything we've been doing on our object editor right here in this pop-up menu. So we'll leave the menu item checked. So that's it for the second meter. Let's now go to the top meter. Once again push the shift key, right click, and now we're at the top meter. We know that because it says GAU 53 and that is our top meter. Let's go through and change our minimum and maximum values to what they are for the other meter. We'll change our maximum to 250. We can come and change our alarm minimum from minus 999 to some other appropriate value. Let's say 75. Hit the Enter key. Let's change our alarm max to something different. Let's call it 200. Hit the Enter key. And now we see that the first meter has a minimum alarm setting at 75 and a maximum alarm setting at 200. For the channel, we're going to leave it at channel 0 because this is going to monitor channel 0. Coming down to the automatic setting, we want to click our auto checkbox because that will then allow us to plot channel 0 automatically on this meter. On the alarm setting, we want to click on it to enable the alarm. Now for the sound. Let's click on sound and let's change the sound of our alarm to something else to distinguish the top meter from the bottom. Now click on the little three decimal points here. Come down to sounds. Click on it. And here are all of our sound wave files. Uh, I know for a fact that if we check watch alarm, that's a pretty distinctive sound. So we'll leave the first meter or the top meter set with our alarm sound that sounds like a watch alarm. Color. There it goes again. We'll leave it at blue-gray. Label. Let's change that to channel zero. Hit the Enter key. We'll leave the major and minor ticks alone, the values. We'll change the decimal to what it was on the second meter, which is two digits after the decimal. And the rest we can leave alone. We're almost done. So now what we want to do is save what we've done to our My Interface. So let's drop the Object Editor. And let's bring up our macro builder. And as we did in the first video, let's click on our toolbar icon inside the macro builder. That basically pulls in all the information that we've just done for our two meters. And let's come over here and save it. This is going to save our macro to my interface. So let's save it. Yes, my interface already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes, I do. Click on Yes. The path file may have changed. Would you like to rebuild the object macro to the update paths? Yes. Give you a lot of chances to say no if you've made a mistake. Now let's click on our street light icon to test our interface. And we're asked the question again. Make sure you save your build first. Yes, we have. Click on Yes, and now we have our interface loading. And there's our meters. Now let's check out our two meters by actually plotting some data to make sure that they work. Let's come down here to our control section. We notice that we're connected to our microcontroller uh, on COM20 at 9600 baud. So let's click on it, and we're going to bring up 10 channels of analog data and 8 channels of digital data. And there our meters begin to react to our data. So channel 1 just went negative. Channel 0 just went below its minimums. So 
So it looks like our meters work. Our next video will show us how to add controls to be able to turn our alarms on and off and also to set our meter scales to the y-axis. So that's in our next video. But in this video we've shown you how to apply two horizontal meters to the object area of your interface and be able to save the interface so that the meters are still there and we've also tested them to make sure that they work.